play guitar. I'm playing guitar, 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 playing guitar, I'm 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 playing guitar, So yeah, that was that. Um, I like to play piano, and I like to play guitar. I also like to play drums, but I'm not playing drums because I don't have a drum set, and I'm actually selling my cymbals. If you would like to have a whole set of ZBTs and an extra free Sabian B8 cymbal that looks kind of cruddy, I'm trying to polish them. Didn't ask because I don't want them anymore. Um, but yeah, school's done, so I'm kind of happy. Still got to work. Calc 2 at SCO was... St. Charles Community College is SCO. It was fun. Not because... I mean, no, there was no homework. It was all tests and all Mathematica exercises. So that means I'm getting ready to go back down to S&T. Got to get a lot of stuff to get ready to do. Hopefully I'll get into Calc 3. I'll be in the first circuits class. I'll be in... I don't know, Physics 23, circuits, or not, whatever. Calc 3 and Physics 23 is like the most deadliest combination of SD. So I probably, probably, I pr hope I got Calc 2 because like I'm banking on failing next year. <laughs> not really, but yeah, I might. In Ham Radio World, uh, my most recent column was about radio sport. Radio sport's my favorite things. In the whole world to do, even though you know I haven't, I haven't gotten on the radio in a, quite a while. But uh, one thing I didn't mention in it was radio direction finding. RDFing is like one of the coolest things. Like I don't know, it's a sport. It's an actual sport. Like people go out and they'll race to find a transmitter and and you know just to do it because it's it's the art. It's the technique. It's the it's skill along with you know endurance and, and all that stuff that pays off in the end and it's really like I said in, in a lot in that column playing sports and playing games is all to hone our skills um, especially ham radio because we play on the radio to hone our skills as communicators uh, we radio direction find to hone our skills as rescue radio operators as in finding lost beacons or people with beacons who are lost in the mountains or in the ocean or whatever and also finding those number stations and CBers who that's one thing I love doing like finding the direction to CBers like big watt CBers down in the down in the boonies of Georgia and stuff those that's always fun so Tripoli, WZO Tripoli is getting back into force right now. Like we're going through a hundred emails, going through like a battery backup system. I don't know where it came from. I mean, start off with Barry. He like emailed about when the power went out over at S&T because of bad storm. Uh, TJ went out, or yeah, TJ went out. But they have a backup generator, and so like the only downtime is about six seconds. But we still like are thinking about a backup generator, or not generator, backup battery, which would be cool. But you know, it's not that necessary. So. A friend Joe says, you know, just use a an uninter like one of those cheap twenty five dollar uh, uninter uninterrupted power supplies. It's a little battery in it, because really backup generator is going to kick in for it. Anyway, anywho, because there's police repeaters on up in the TJ penthouse, which is this. This is where we uh, have all our repeater equipment. We share it with the MS and T PD, I think. There's also a few up antennas up there, like, like up here, but I don't know what they're there for. One of them's actually not even connected. Just keep an eye out for the next column. Keep an eye out for more videos. I'm thinking about making some series, like a series of ham radio videos, something that no one has done before. Keep an eye out. I don't know. And throw me ideas for the columns because I love it when I get emails. But this last column hasn't made too much email progress. So email me. I like it. I love emails.
I love responding to your emails. And also, congratulations to Caitlin Cole, K3SP, for getting the Ham of the Year Award. I met this 8th uh, grader. I don't know. I think she's a ninth grader, 10th grader or something. I think 15. I can't remember. I met her at Dayton at the Youth Forum. Um, and she was very enthusiastic about all, all this ham radio stuff. And she, she took care of the kids, you know. Like, it was a little bit of babysitting along with a little bit of, you know, teaching the sport or the, 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 ham, the hobby ham radio to the... To these kids that age between, you know, like, 7 and 12 or something. There are a few older po- older kids, but, you know. But she took care of business, and it, it really it really was quite a sight to see such a young ham taking so much initiative. And a cool thing about the summer, every night, every day, sorry, it's been over 95 degrees for the past couple of weeks. Well, every night it's been over 80 degrees, so it hasn't cooled down much. But every night there's been a crazy, huge, like, two-meter band opening. So, like, I was driving home yesterday from my girlfriend's house, and I was listening to KC95 on 94.7, and I heard a different, I heard Champaign, Illinois, like, uh, on the dial on 94.5. I was like, What? So I looked on my phone and I looked up at the mountain lake dot uh, k twelve dot u s or something. It's it's a VHF APRS like um, mapping system. That's really cool, and it shows you where uh, bands are open. And so and behold, there was a big huge blotch of red right over you know eastern Illinois and you know western Chicago or Chicago and Missouri and all this, you know. Here's a link down here. It's a great website. But I was like, man. So I tried to get on my radio, but I didn't make any contacts because it was like 11 o'clock at night. No one wants to get on my radio at 11 o'clock at night. But one thing I did see was a Tar Heel antenna on my way back from school today. And I was like, wow, looky there, another hand. That was the first time. Like, I never see Tar Heels and, and radios and stuff like that on cars during my commutes because... There aren't that many hams out there here in Warrington. Actually, there's 44, but I don't think any of them are active. Except for Ed, K0KL. I see him occasionally going to Walmart. Because I worked at Walmart. And I also saw a Saturn SUV with, like, this huge coil, like, this huge CB antenna on it. With a huge coil, like a, I don't know, 70 kilowatt, 70, yeah, 70 kilowatt coil on it, so so to speak. And a big sticker that says, uh, it said Renegade Amps. So I was like, nice. He's a free bander. Haha. <laughs> yeah, that's it for my blog now. Vlog now. I don't have anything else to say. I'm going to go make this vlog because I haven't posted to YouTube in like a million years. 73.